weirdos, this is Evan Jarvix with Make Oklahoma Weirder, and this is your local music vlog for the week. It's July 12th, uh, Friday afternoon. My Friday morning recording uh, had some issues with it, so i got to record it again. But here I am, and uh, we got to talk about a lot of stuff. Let's kick it off with uh, the show at Tower tonight. Tower Theater is having a big lineup of Oklahoma-based uh, rock bands, um, in particular indie rock styles of Broncho headlining with support from Color Music and Deer People. Deer People, I think, is probably the biggest headline here because they haven't been a band for a long time. They kind of went on an unspoken hiatus a few years back, and we haven't really heard from them. And so they're doing this one-off show. They're not getting back together, as far as I know, but they're doing this one show alongside Color Music and Broncho. If you don't know Dear People, if you're kind of newer to the scene or just, I don't know, just don't know about Dear People for whatever reason, they were pretty darn big here a few years ago. Um, they uh, were a six-piece band um, kind of headed by a uh, keyboardist, singer, songwriter who just has like one of the most distinct voices in indie rock music as far as I'm concerned. You know, in or out of the state. I mean, anything else he's touched is always... I can always tell it's Brennan Barnes, uh, which is the guy um, behind Dear People, more or less. Um, he was in something called King Latifah for a while. He currently has a project called Mount Terror. You hear those vocals, you you instantly recognize them. It's, uh, it's something about the way that he just has a certain pent-up energy... In, in what he does, and uh, it, occasionally it, you know, explodes into just kind of these shouty vocals that I, I just, I don't know, enjoy a lot, and I think it brings a lot of energy uh, to the rest of the music, which is also very eccentric, very different, um, yet pretty uh, easy to get on board with as not not too esoteric for for people to be confounded by or whatever like it's very fun music very kind of pop um oriented in some ways uh even though like they have a flute player <laughs> like there's a dedicated flute player in this band there's a guy who plays violin and accordion you know i mean it's it's a little weird but it's also not uh like it's not a chamber pop kind of thing uh and it's also not like I don't know, like wacky in any way. Like it's just all fueled into just a really smartly arranged, smartly uh, concocted sound that um, I just enjoy a lot, especially in the live setting. And um, yeah, it's just really exciting to uh, have a chance to see Dear People again one last time, which I will get to do tonight because a ticket did happen to fall in my lap. Um, also going to be excited to see everybody else. I haven't seen Broncho in a while. And then Color Music, um, uh, they're, they've changed quite a bit you know, since, you know, the last time I saw them, which was probably in their pink album days. I don't think I saw them in the purple album days. Um, but of course they dropped an album earlier this year that I've talked about, but they also dropped some new music a couple of days ago. So check that out. If you weren't aware, color music dropped, uh, some brand new music just this week, probably in anticipation for this show. So um, excited to check all that out. And, uh, if, if I weren't going to this show, I would definitely be going to 89th street because 89th street is hosting cat locks album release show. Cat lock, um, has been getting just immense amounts of local press, probably more than just about any other project I've seen lately. Um, in terms of like music magazine type press. Uh, I mean, she wasn't written about in the Oklahoman or anything that I could tell. Um, but as far as really knowing kind of where the music fans are, you know, uh, she got a write up from the Gazette this week. Um, the star catcher magazine up in Tulsa wrote about her. Uh, okay. Sessions wrote about her again. And then, uh, KOSU put something out as well. So, I mean, that's that's quite a bit. So she definitely knows how to get her, her stuff out there, which I appreciate. She hustles a lot, and she definitely knows how to work social media, really knows how to engage with people. And uh, it's it's all for, thankfully, like really good music. <laughs> um, she uh, has this new album called You Again, which is, you know, it's one of my favorite EPs of the year. I'll just say it. Um, it's... 
it's everything I talked about a couple of weeks ago with her with her lead single, where she's just you know a really interesting songwriter and arranger. I think in terms of pop music, I mean, if you were to isolate her voice, you probably wouldn't necessarily know uh, what kind of choices she would make instrumentally. And uh, I mean, there's like some horn stuff on here. There's like some tempo change stuff on here. There's some really interesting ideas at work, and I, I feel like. Um, a voice like hers being, uh, to me, pretty pretty pop-centric, uh, very cl- clear. There's a lot of clarity in her enunciation. It reminds me a lot of, like, Broadway music in some ways, or just, like, you know, pop vocalism. But then her music tends to be uh, quite different from that, very less predictable. And so I, I find that really really interesting and engaging. And then, you know, just the way that she kind of conveys very directly, you know, kind of uh, interesting sides to, you know, the very complicated world of relationships that a lot of times kind of get boiled down to simpler things in other songs. I feel like she kind of explores uh, more interesting angles to that. So that's really interesting as well. Um, But yeah, new Catlock EP, uh, excited to have that out. Um, for everyone to hear, and if you haven't heard it or you you aren't sure about it, just give it a chance. I think you'll be surprised at, at how engaging it is. I really do like it a lot. Um, supporting her at this show is 1210 and uh, Matt Jewett, as well as Caleb Alvin James. Caleb Alvin James I'm very excited about, by the way. Um, he doesn't have a lot of recorded material out there. I know he used to be a part of like another collective of some sort. Um, and then has kind of been doing a solo thing, but he's one of the most versatile, uh, music guys that I know around, like can definitely jump from style to style to style, um, and has total passion and interest in all of it and totally wants to explore all of it to its fullest extent. And I recently found out that he is a newly found, uh, he's, he's going to be a member or is already a member of the Sativa Prophets. So that's very exciting uh, to have his voice in the mix. I think he'll add a lot of really interesting ideas to what they do. And I know that they've been wanting to kind of push the boundaries of what they've been doing already. So I think I think he'll really help them get there for sure. So uh, if you're going to that show, make sure to get there early and catch Caleb Alvin James because I'm really excited about him uh, moving forward from from where he's been and where he's at. I think he's got a huge amount of potential. Okay, um, I want to mention Content Farm. Uh, Content Farm dropped Volume 4 this week, uh, which uh, they've put out uh, four volumes already just this year since starting uh, at the beginning of the year. Um, the the music label is Cowboy 2.0, if you don't know. Uh, so if you want to follow them, it's, it's Cowboy 2.0 on uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram and all that, but, uh, the content farm series is kind of a really interesting, uh, thing. I haven't talked about it before, but if you're really into kind of like dream pop, bedroom pop stuff, uh, they, they, they seem to kind of specialize in that. It's, it's kind of a Norman area kind of thing. Um, if you know husbands, the band husbands, uh, the guys from husbands are behind this, but everybody's kind of wearing pseudonyms. Nobody's actually going by their actual names. So there's like other members from other bands who are also involved in this, but are going by different names. Um, if you're a part of like that whole sort of like mad honey pigments and all those kind of bands down there that play a lot at Opolis, for instance, um, a lot of those type of people are involved in this project going by different pseudonyms and it's, it's just a fun project and, uh, yeah, new, new volume is out. It's fun. It's great. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's a really good article, uh, that I found from lover spit mag, um, who's based in Oklahoma, but not exclusive to covering Oklahoma, um, did an article about, uh, the, the label and kind of what goes into it. And so, uh, definitely check that out if you have any interest. Um, speaking of that magazine, uh, they also did a Q and A with S Reedy. And I know I haven't talked about S Reedy this year. Uh, he dropped a, a new mixtape a few weeks ago, but, uh, it's not the last you'll hear of it because I am, uh, almost done with a review that I've been working on. So a full, uh, in-depth, uh, 
analysis on the new mixtape from S. Reedy, which is just called a mixtape. Um, but shout out to Lover Spit Mag. I don't think I've given them a shout before. And uh, with that, I guess I'm out of time. So I'll see you next week.